All right, out scouting some more fields today, looking at soybeans, and specifically a soybean field that had had a three-way cover crop blend um, seeded last fall. And we had a three-way blend that would have consisted of winter rye, radish, and rapeseed here on this farm. And as you can tell now, We've got uh, the soybeans growing through the remaining residue of the winter rye that was terminated this spring. So wanted to give a mid-season update of what these cover crops after they're terminated can look like. And even after they're terminated, some of the benefits, a couple of the benefits, can give you two benefits of what this winter rye residue is still doing now, even in mid-July, and uh, how that can be a benefit to you guys as you're getting ready to make your fall cover crop planting decisions, where you're looking to make some placements, what you're gonna decide to use. So we did, um, the soybean field would have been planted first part of May, the growing cover crop would have been seeded, like I said, last fall, but then terminated this uh, mid to late April. And as you can see, if you can see it, a really big cloud bank over there. Uh, about six hours ago, we had to go through and dump about four to five tenths of rain on this farm. So, what I like about having this cover crop residue is that I'm walking through the field right now and as you can see they've got residue through the rows in between the rows and even on the spot where the residue may be a little bit lighter as I walk across it I don't pick up My boots hardly picking up any residue. Rather any mud for that matter. Why is that? What is the standing residue of that cover crop done? And essentially what it's done is it's helped slow that water, that raindrop, slow the velocity of the raindrop down before it hits the soil. And so because it slows the velocity down, you are preventing impact compaction on your soil because the, the, the soybean rows haven't quite closed the row. They're close, They're really close. But they haven't canopied completely. Had that residue not been here there would have been some rain that would have been able to go through between the rows hit that soil with a very hard and definite impact and arguably the compaction's not a lot it's not very great but if you're trying to build aggregation and improve oxygen within the soil every little bit adds up throughout the season all these little things add up over time and really help to build structure within your soil the other thing so one is you've got the residue from the winter eye that's preventing compaction even now into July so probably uh, within the next couple of weeks you will see close up and you will see a lot of this residue just
so when it rains now what it what the the skeleton so to say or the shell of that winter eye is going to be able to do is help the white rainwater help your soil be able to take more rainwater in faster so you're going to increase your infiltration rate and that becomes um, of great importance and it becomes a tremendous benefit to your cash crop because it the rooting structures of your covers will pair with your cash crops to store moisture so uh, next next week they're calling for extremely hot temperatures through this part of the world so it's really going to get warm we could start to see some disease pressure set in on some of the corn and we're really going to start to be scouting for that a lot of guys have been spraying fungicide With the heat also comes a lot of evaporation and when you have these mechanical structures you know these roots dry, that so I've still got I've also still got last year's corn roots here too no tilling this I had a craftsman set of pliers one time. It was probably one of the nicest set of pliers I ever had. I was working on fence at the horse farm at U of I, and I finished setting the setting the wire. It had been busted, and uh, I laid my pliers down at the base of the post, and I left them there. I never got them back. It was so mad. I think I have it now. In between, in between uses. But anyway, back to a non-livestock story. The rooting structure that doesn't look like much now, but you got to remember we also get three, three months, three plus months, really, of decomposition. But without bringing the spade, I didn't bring the spade wife and I are out scouting fields on a Sunday afternoon, so please forgive me, I don't have my, no, I don't have my spade. You can make fun of me because I'm not a diehard because I didn't carry it in the back, but it was kind of a last minute decision. Anyway, she was gracious enough to let me come drive by a couple fields, and she's gracious enough to let me shoot this video now. So I thank her, but uh, if I had my spade, I'd dig some soil for you. Since I don't, I'm just pulling these straight out of the ground, and you've still got roots. The reason that the roots still are important now, back to the water holding capacity, is that it, it's going to get hot next week, and it could be a prolonged period of drought, stress, heat stress, and when you have moisture available, extra moisture available. Say you hang on to moisture in the top six, eight inches for an extra day or two. How much is that going to add to your bushels at the end of the season when you go to harvest? Those are the sorts of things that start to add up and start to accrue and give you back uh, a return on your investment in that cover crop. So. Soybeans look really good. They're blooming. Um, two big things I wanted to show highlight on this field was, well, m three main things. One, I wanted to show you guys what the winter rye, after it's after it had been, go, grab. you know, this farmer let the rye head out so before he terminated it so this was already headed out before he terminated it so what does that look like now in July so I wanted to show you that what soybeans growing through the winter rye in July look like talk about uh, 
preventing compaction because of the mechanical structure, that physical structure and barrier, um, preventing the rain impact, minimizing that impact, and then also the ability for your plants or your, your cash crops now to have extra access to water because of what you did last fall. So, T. Carly, looking forward to getting back in the Hagee and seeding some cover crops here in about a month. We're going to be back at it, um, get your guys' cropping plans put together, and uh, start already. You're already planning for next year. So, pair those cover crops with your cash crops, we'll start to see some really good results.